Hello, and welcome back to Sinister Sisters Podcast. Hello. It is the first episode of season two. Yay. Welcome to season two, which is Devious Duos. Woo. I'm Shrimp. And this is my co-host, Kat. And Hello. just in case you are new here to Sinister which Sisters, be. which you might be, um, we're sisters. Kat's the older sister. Hello. <laughs> I'm 23. I didn't plan this pot out, so I don't really, I don't know what I'm saying. I feel like I can tell. <laughs> Hell yeah. Anyways, this is the pot they did plan out. This season, we're talking about people who commit crimes in pairs. Because that's the duo of the devious duos, you know? Indeed. Uh, um, so we obviously have to do some self-promotion. So please follow us on Instagram at SinisterSisters.podcast. On TikTok at SinisterSistersPodcast. Email us at SinisterSistersPod at gmail.com. And leave us a review wherever you are listening. Yeah. We always say Spotify or Apple Podcasts, but our second most listened to on program is platform is Stitcher. So. This is true. I don't know anything about Stitcher, but if you can rate Maybe. us, review us, send us a message on there, please do. Do all of the above if you can. Um, also, if you're watching this on YouTube, which you might be, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah. And if you have something you want us to talk about, please submit it via the case request form that is in the Instagram bio, the episode description, and the description box of the video. Hell yeah. I think that's it. That's all. I think so. Yeah. Today's episode, our first episode of season two, is about Gerald and Charlene Gallego. Have you heard of these people? No. I have not. No. Okay. So, content warnings for this episode include somewhat graphic descriptions of murder, rape, and also domestic violence. So, if you need to not listen to this one, then feel free to skip it. And know that we do have a Soulbox Sunday episode on Sunday that Kat will talk to us about something or other. Do you have a, a, a topic picked? I have about six topics on the go. So it'll okay. be one of those. But it will be lighter, it. for sure. Lighter, for sure. Yeah. That's the point of the soapbox Sunday, isn't it? It is. Isn't it, it is. It is. <laughs> Anyways. So, Gerald and... Sorry. Gerald Armand Gallego was born on July 17th, 1946 in Sacramento, California. His mother was a sex worker and his father, who he was estranged from, was a criminal who, fun fact, in 1955 became the first Mississippi man to be executed in the gas chamber for killing a police officer during a prison escape. So great role models so far. Gallego began his criminal career at age 13 when he sexually abused a six-year-old girl. He has had 23 arrests and had served prison time after being convicted of a robbery prior to the murders. Gallego worked as a bartender and a truck driver. He was married a total of seven times, including two marriages to the same woman, and he was still married to a previous wife when he married Charlene Williams. Oh. As you do. Bigamy. You know, we love that. Charlene Adele Williams was born on October 10th, 1956 in Stockton, California. She was a smart and a shy child from a supportive home. Um, The trajectory of her life began to change when she started doing drugs and abusing alcohol when she was a young adult. She was married Mm. twice before meeting Gerald. Um, There is zero information about how these two met or what their early marriage was like or their relationship or anything. The next information that I could find is just their murders. So we'll talk about the crimes that they committed and also... We have, um, like, I've broken it down by victim. Okay. So, on September 11th, 1978, 
two teenagers, 17-year-old Rhonda Scheffler and 16-year-old Kippy Vaught, disappeared from a mall in Sacramento. Charlene had lured them to a nearby van and the couple had abducted them from there. Gerald used a handgun to threaten the girls and they tied them up. They drove to Baxter in California where Gerald raped and murdered the girls, each with a single shot to the back of their heads. Mm. And then on June 24th, 1979, 14-year-old Brenda Judd and 13-year-old Sandra Colley were abducted from the Washoe County Fair in Reno, Nevada. Charlene later testified that Gerald Gerald, sorry, beat the girls to death with a shovel or a hammer. Their remains were not found or identified until 20 years later. Holy Similarly, f- yeah. Fuck. Similarly, on the 24th of April, 1980, Stacy Ann Redican and Karen Chipman Twiggs, both 17, went missing from a Sacramento mall. They were found in July, sexually abused and bludgeoned to death. All of their crimes took place um, in two years, about two years, three years, so from uh-huh. 1978 to 1980. Yeah. The next victim was Linda Teresa Aguilar, who was kidnapped while she was hitchhiking on July, sorry, June 6th, 1980. She was 21 years old and she was also pregnant. She was abducted and murdered with a blunt object and buried in a shallow grave outside of Gold Beach, Oregon. She is buried in Vinland Cemetery in Clarkson, Washington, because that's where she was from, I believe. Virginia Mochell is the next victim. She was 31 years old and she was abducted on July 17th, 1980, from a parking lot of a West Sacramento tavern where she worked as a bartender. Her skeletal remains, still bound with nylon fishing line, were found three months later outside of Clarksburg. Mm -hmm. Loops of cord from the victim's neck were admitted as proof of death by strangulation. Mm. Yes. Um, The last victims were a a 22-year-old man, Craig Miller, and his fiancée, 21-year-old Mary Elizabeth Sowers, um, while they were leaving a fraternity party on November 1st, 1980, they were forced into the Gallegos car at gunpoint. Um, Miller was ordered out of the car and shot. His body was found near Bass Lake in California. The couple returned to their apartment with Sowers, where Gerald sexually abused her before taking her to a field in Placer County, California, where he then murdered her. So all of these crimes, if you might have noticed, have taken place in different states. Um, California and Oregon and Nevada. So three different states. So the murders and like the kidnaps were not attributed to the same person at the very beginning because as we talked about in last season the police cases and investigations often ended at state lines and unless there was reason for the FBI to get involved which would have to be like crimes across state lines they were not linked very often um so none of it was linked until Craig Miller and Mary Elizabeth Sowers went missing or were murdered because a friend of Craig Miller's and Elizabeth Sowers witnessed their abduction and reported the car's license plate number. Wow. Police use this information to track down and arrest the Gallegos at a Western Union office. Charlene's parents were in the process of wiring her some money. Gerald and Charlene pleaded not guilty to charges of kidnapping and murder. Charlene's attorneys were eventually able to convince prosecutors in several states and counties to allow Charlene to testify against Gerald for a plea deal that reduced her prison sentence to 16 years and 8 months. Excuse me. So. Jeez. That is kind of how, because she was um, testifying against him, that is how they got him for all the other murders as well. Um, Oh, okay. Whereas there wasn't, like, evidence that linked them before, you know? Um, So, in 
June 1983, Gerald was sentenced to death in California for the murders of Mary Elizabeth Sowers and Craig Miller. In June 1984, Gerald was convicted in Nevada for the murders of Karen Twiggs and Stacey Redekin and subsequently sentenced to death. The Nevada death sentence was overturned in 1997. So he was convicted in two places for the murders. Doesn't He was never convicted in Oregon. It didn't say why. but hmm. And for the other murders in, Sac- in California and Sacramento? Yes, in Sacramento, no. Those... Maybe because he was already sentenced to death. They didn't think that there needed to be another trial. And I don't know. Yeah. You think just for the family's closure, it would be nice, but. Yeah. In July of 1997, Charlene completed her sentence and was released. While in prison, she extensively studied psychology, business, and Icelandic literature. During an interview, Charlene claimed that she was also a victim when she said, quote, There were victims who died, and there were victims who lived. It's taken me a hell of a long time to realize I'm one of the ones who lived. End quote. She also claimed that she tried to save some of these people's lives. In 2002, Gerald died of cancer in a Nevada prison medical center while awaiting execution. Okay. So he's dead. She's not, from what I can understand. And she basically um, stated that it was all him. He did everything. Um, He dragged her into this murderous, felonious relationship, which I suppose could be the truth. Yeah. It it did. um, There is a theory that um, serial killers often have terrible childhoods and... Um, Gerald did like his he was estranged from his father so he didn't have a father figure and then his father figure or his father did like was executed also for murder Hmm. and his mum was a sex worker which whatever but she probably like maybe wasn't around or made him hate women or something I don't know yeah and if you listened to our most recent soapbox episode from this past Sunday. Uh, we did talk about how people find themselves in, in these kinds of relationships. And um, it sounds like Charlene sort of meets that profile of the dependent partner. Yes. Remember how we talked about like they often were from middle class families with maybe some abuse in the home, but otherwise relatively, you know happy normal childhoods a lot of the time so yes yeah i don't know there wasn't i couldn't find very much information about their like personal lives i guess Mm. or the way that their marriage was organized or set up there wasn't any information usually you can find like oh he was hitting her and she also didn't have a job and blah 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 and so yeah it's kind of easier to point to that that maybe she was dependent on him in some way, but I couldn't find anything Mm -hmm. really about um, who they were. They are basically just known for these murders and that's it. That's all like they are known that is known about them in Mm -hmm. the world. And she's out now, right? Yes. She was released in 1997. Wow. Okay. So she hasn't murdered anybody else since that we know of. So Not that we know of. She didn't go for... That's not 16 years though, is it? No, it is. Never mind. <laughs> math is not our strong suit I here on Sinister Sisters. math. Also, I was listening to the um, episode, the last episode that we did about like how people find themselves in these like soapbox, whatever. And we were talking about how we love an alliteration. Yeah, and I'm like devious duo, so Buck Sunday, and then literally forget that the entire podcast is called Sinister Sisters. <laughs> Indeed, all the alliterations. Yes. So, um, that's all I have for today. This case turned out to be, or this episode turned out to be, very short. So, that's it. That's all. 
It's okay. You are getting three episodes this week, though, friends. So You are. Let us know if there's any devious duos that you want to hear about. Um, and let us know in the case request form if yeah. you want to hear about anything. I think some planned episodes that I have for this season – um, which we did talk about, I think, last episode. But I'm planning on talking about the Moore's murders, um, which is a very long and intricate story. I am planning on talking about Fred and Rosemary West, which I'm hoping Sinister Mum will come and talk to us on that episode because she was telling me this weekend that she remembers it happening. Oh, interesting. So... Huh. Hoping we'll have a sinister, sinister mom, mom drop sinister in. Sinister mom. Yeah, hopefully. And then I also think the Ken and Barbie killers, because that's yes. the little Canadian flair for the for the uh, season, because we had one last season with Elizabeth Lothar. Very good, very fun, very actually yeah. not fun at all. But but thanks for us joining us. Let yeah, us know. let us know. Let us know if there's any soapboxes you'd like me to stand on. Yes. We love standing on soapboxes. <sighs> Thank you for listening to Sinister Sisters. It is I, Shmi. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Check back on Sunday for a new episode. And then next Tuesday for another true crime case. Yay! Bye! Bye.